Hi, this is Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me today for another card making video. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make this card with the Thoughtful Branches stamp set and using the watercolor paper embossed resist technique. Here are the supplies that we will use to make this card. There's going to be three inks, Delightful Dijon, Rich Razzleberry, and Old Olive. And those are regular Stampin' Up! ink pads. We're going to take the pooled ink from the inside of the stamp pad. This is linen thread. We're going to use a, um, a small size to tie around a piece to uh, achieve a little bit of interest on the card. The paper that we're going to use is Old Olive cardstock, and it is this is going to be our card base, and it's cut to five and a half by eight and a half inches, and it is scored at four and a quarter. We'll use a piece of watercolor paper, any kind that you prefer will work, and it will be cut at four inches by five and a quarter inches, and we're going to trim it more later after we have finished doing the watercolor. There is always a smooth side and a rough side to watercolor paper. So make sure that you choose for your project which side that you would like to use. The rough side is a little harder to stamp on, but for the purposes of today, um, I think you'll be okay if you choose to use the rough side, which will give your finished work a little more interest. And there's a piece of designer series paper that is from the 2015-2017 in color designer series paper stack. It is delightful Dijon. It's a small piece cut at three inches by four and an eighth inches. The four and an eighth is going to fit just inside of our four and a quarter card base. So that's why it's cut at four and an eighth. There's a polka dot side and then a side with writing and I chose to use a side with writing. This is an embossing bag that is um, in the catalog called an embossing buddy. And this helps us to be able to um, make our surface of paper anti-static so that when we do um, heat embossing, then the heat emboss powder will not stick to the places we don't want it to stick to. This is a must whenever you do any kind of uh, heat embossing techniques. The embossing powders are clear embossing powder and copper embossing powder. These are from Stampin' Up! and they work really nicely paired together with the embossing buddy and Stampin' Up!'s heat gun. They are um, a powerhouse. They work really wonderfully. I'm very pleased with how my products um, turn out with them. We're also going to use the Thoughtful Branches stamp set. And the image that we're going to use is the leaf. It looks like um, it has it's a veined leaf. And the sentiment that I chose for the front of the card is your kindness makes a difference. You can use any one that you want from this stamp set. There's, as you can see, there's a lot to choose from. And the images definitely are larger than they are displayed on the front of the box. Um, so keep that in mind. But today I'm going to be using this veined leaf. I have a coffee filter that I keep kind of folded up. This is to catch the emboss powder, um, as you'll see later demonstrated, that whenever we do some dry embossing, I let the powder fall off into some kind of a receptacle and then fold it and allow it to go back into the, um, the little tin that it's kept in. And then I also have an old paintbrush that I use to brush away the loose pieces of embossing powder before I emboss. Um, these things are also a must whenever I do my heat embossing because if I don't use these tools then um, my look is not as effective. I'm, I'm much happier using that. Frog tape. Um, this is the painter's tape that does not stick to your work. Um, I just use it in um, a small amount. I think it comes in a couple of different colors and um, this stuff is wonderful. There's more here than you'll probably use 
in 10 years. <laughs> so if you can pick up a, a small thing of frog tape, uh, it's going to get you far, uh, especially if you need to tape your work down to any surface uh, because your paper is going to uh, buckle a little bit when you do watercoloring. A paintbrush. This is a uh, silver brush, black velvet, uh, number six. And um, I use this for a lot of my um, art projects. This is, I believe, um, one of the best brushes that's available to crafters without having to go to um, an artist level. So I would suggest that if you enjoy um, any kind of a medium where you use watercolors or um, stamping ink of any kind, but you use it in a watery capacity, invest in a nice paintbrush because you'll be much happier with the process. And that's the point of making um, the projects is to be able to enjoy what you're doing and have a great time doing it. So silver brush, black velvet. This is Memento um, Reinker, And um, you're probably wondering why in the world is that out there? Well, on my card, I have little splatters of black and I achieved that by using a little bit of the memento onto a um, onto a clear block. I dropped a little bit and added a little water and then I took and flicked out with my paintbrush. And um, this is the splatter that is the result. So a little bit of re-inker and it is a water-based ink, the memento tuxedo black. And the last thing is, I guess I'll leave this here to show you. The White Perfect Accents from Stampin' Up, they come in three different sizes and they're really cute. They're very versatile. But the way that I use them the most and the way that I used them in this card is that when you, when you take one of the accents off, then you can use your tweezers or a, a paper piercer to peel the backing off. And that's what these little pieces are here because I took them off and just kind of swiped them there. And what they leave you with is the the clear, the clear dot, and it looks like a little drop of water. So um, that's a little trick that you can use with a product that is not its intended um, use, but it it certainly lends a different look. These are all the products that I use today, and now we'll get started. Let's begin with the heat emboss process. We're going to use Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink that allows the heat emboss powder to stick to paper um, without interfering when during the heat process. This is what we use for um, all of the heat embossing. So we'll ink this up and stamp our sentiment here and hold it to the paper long enough to allow the ink to settle into the paper and come off of the stamp. So once we have the Versamark on, the, the center is where I did the copper embossing. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of this powder around. And once I get it off of the tape, which I shouldn't have put on yet, but I'll kind of shake it around a little bit. Then the, you can see that the embossing powder has stuck to the ink. And that's where we'll take one of our old paint brushes and kind of go around, make sure that there's no extra because once that ink is, um, once the, the powder is embossed with the heat gun, it will be there forever. And it might not be part of your design. Um, what you didn't see um, that I should have shown you on camera, and I apologize, is that I did use the embossing buddy to run over the paper before I used the Versafine, the, the Versamark ink. So this is ready to heat set. I'm going to, this is how, where my coffee filter comes in handy, and I'm just going to slide this stuff back in. If there's any extra, I usually just kind of shake it off. And then we're going to switch over to clear emboss powder. And the reason I'm going to use clear 
is that I want the uh, the paint to pool around the embossing um, because the paper with the embossing will resist the paint. So we will use again this Versamark ink. And I placed the leaves in my initial card um, as if they were falling down. So I kind of want to stick with that, um, that same kind of scheme. And just make the leaves look like they're coming down. Can't really go wrong with this because, well, first and foremost, it's art. And art is what it is. It doesn't make any excuses. And um, second of all, this is this is something that is going to look great no matter how you stamp these out because your um, watercolors or your stamping up ink with watercolor um, process is going to look great. It's 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 going to look wonderful by the time you're finished. The ink's going to pull around everything. Okay, it's kind of hard to see where it is stamped on here. There's a there's a little bit of a shine to it, but what I do whenever I I'm going to cover this up whenever I get a certain amount on there just to keep track of where everything is I'll, I'll go over with the powder and if you can see here it's part of a leaf got it that it's it's working to where it is getting it's getting the uh, emboss powder onto the leaves now this is not a very quick process. It doesn't take as long as um, as it does to do other techniques, but it definitely is not something that you sit down and make a 15-minute card because you're because of the steps that you're choosing to take. I'm going to put a couple more leaves on here. that'll do with one and maybe have another one coming off here and that'll do us now to finish off with the powder so as we prepare to begin with our um, heat embossing a trick that I would like to share with you is when you get ready to use your emboss gun um, or your heat gun, then it's a wonderful idea to heat it up before you start your project to get the coil inside warm so that when you bring the, the heat, when you bring the heat <laughs> to your paper, then you're, um, you're ready for something to happen. You're not waiting for your gun to heat up because in the process you can actually scorch your paper and um, number one burnt paper does not smell pleasant and number two you're taking your time to work on a project you don't want to you don't want to have it take too long now this is the loud part um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the embossing and then um, I'll come back to whenever it's finished but I take the gun and put it on um, the number two setting in case you've never used one before, then um, please feel free to experiment and try new techniques because this is really great. So I'm going to turn this on. It's going to be really loud. I'm going to show you a little bit of the emboss process and then um, we'll come back to the coloring portion. So now the watercolor paper is embossed and I hope you can see the shininess. And what that shiny does is it locks the paper down underneath it, underneath this coating, so that when we apply any kind of a liquid, it's going to move around. Uh, and that's where you get the resistance and this technique is called emboss resist. So now back into the frog tape. And you notice I'm not using a lot. I'm not 
too concerned with um, the paper warping because I'm not going to use so much water in this card that that it's really going to make a big difference um, but it is because I used the heat on the watercolor paper it is already starting to buckle so this is when I will use my uh, paintbrush I have Old Olive Delightful Dijon and Rich Razzleberry I have the ink pooled into the lid of all three of these so that I can pick them up with a paintbrush. I've got some clean water here. Um, normally when I watercolor I use a clean water and a, um, a not clean water, but this is a very simple process today and um, I'm going to just use one water and then I have a paper towel. A paper towel is important because sometimes you need to get, if you get too much ink or too much water then you need to pick it up with a paper towel and then you also, in between colors, you need to uh, clean and dry your brush a little bit. So let's get started. First I'm going to wet the paper. And what I'm going to do is, um, once the paper is nice and wet, then I will apply the ink colors and um, it's going to move on to the paper in a different way than if it were dry. When you do dry, when you do wet on dry, that's um, a technical term for watercoloring, then the paper starts soaking up the ink directly and it, it doesn't really move around very much on your, on your work surface on your paper. Um, however, if you, if you pre-wet your watercolor paper, then whenever you bring the ink in, then you are allowing the ink to be able to react with the water. So you can see here that all I do is apply a little bit of the coloring and it does its job. The water works with the, the watercolor, the, the water works with the paper. Um, and you see how it's resisting here around the leaves? That's what we want to see. So I'm going to try to follow a little bit of the rule where you um, do your eye is more pleasant, pleased um, in threes. So I'm going to be probably done with Rich Razzleberry there um, and move on to green because I want green to be the focus color on the card. And this is, this is not really... Um, there's no precise trick to this. What I'm simply doing is um, just bringing in a wash of color and I want it to slowly fade out by the time it reaches the bottom of the card stock here. So I haven't dipped back in. I've just gotten some water to add to, um, to what I'm using and I'm allowing the ink to run, to run crazy <laughs> with um, with the paper and I want it to come I want the green color to come all the way down and I want it to fade um, and have a kind of a gradient look so um, I kind of like here I like this how this is working out and do you see um, all of the leaves we can we can see how everything is um, working around them the the embossing is resisting which is how we get that term in boss resist. And the yellow that um, I brought in was just basically to give highlights. What I imagined when I was making uh, my initial card was that this is um, like a, a summer day and the light was coming through the leaves in a forest or in a, in a grove of trees and that this is what it would look like to me. So I'm bringing the color into multiple places. I don't want to have yellow in one place. I want to have it in, if I can help it, I'm going to have it in three because that's what um, my eye is going to be happier seeing in threes. An odd number. Okay. So in order to um, have the pooling, um, if I want to make this a little bit darker, then what I can do is bring my heat over and on 
there's two settings on the heat gun, number one and number two. Number two is for heat embossing and number one is more for drying. So if I click it once, then I can hold it close enough but not too close to where it's going to dry the ink and dry the water. So I will no longer be using the wet on wet technique that I started out with. Once this paper is dry, then I'll be using the wet on dry watercolor technique. Which means that my paper is going to absorb a lot more of the ink intensity. So once we have this first um, coating down, then um, it's great. And you see as you add heat to the paper, then it kind of starts laying down a little bit. And um, sometimes we need to coax that paper to get back in line. All right, so what I would like to do is, is see a little bit more green coming through. And I really want it to pool up around the leaves. So if I bring it over to the leaves and allow it to just kind of pull around. Then that's how we're going to get a little bit more color intensity in different places. More intense color in, in more places. Um, and then allow it to fade out. Now the thickness of this watercolor paper allows us to be able to add many layers of paint and it absorbs it and it also doesn't pill, which is nice because sometimes um, sometimes whenever the paper pills, if you work on cardstock, then you'll see um, that it will um, it'll make little beads and that makes things difficult for you to work with in your art. I believe we are just about to the place where we've got enough on here. All right, I'm going to get a little more water that I've still got on the green. Kind of blend this down a little bit more. Well, I'm going to bring a little bit more. So this is the part of an art making process that you get to decide what you want to do. You get to decide how you want the finished product to look, um, what the intensity of the color is, what um, what actual colors you want to use. This is this is all part of the artistic process that you're in charge of. So it's pretty cool whenever you're in charge of something in your life. Little bit more here just to blend out. And I believe that is probably enough. And I, I see that there are lines forming um, in the paint, which is perfectly natural. Um, if what you can do if you want to complement and work with is add more paint, make sure that it's wet enough but add more paint um, to kind of get yourself the look that you're uh, that you want to achieve. This reminds me of the shade here, so. I'm happy with this. Okay, so um, the next part of the process would be to make sure that everything looks the way you want it before you put all your supplies away for the painting process and um, and then we're gonna either let this dry naturally or um, or bring it I know I just can't stop right <laughs> I'm obsessed I have to keep moving my eye wants to keep moving now I will peel the paint back and um, I'll apply um, some color this is just kind of my way that Unless it's something that that I need to have all the way down, I just I just kind of work with holding my corners down, and I'm gonna trim this anyhow um, to be able to fit to a different size on my card. So um, 
that works, but it's going to get cut off anyhow. <laughs> um, so this is the time where you allow your work to dry naturally or to bring the heat gun over and, um, and then we're going to trim the paper. My work is dry and the next step is to apply the splatter work before I trim down the paper. So um, you can see the black splatters and this is, this is kind of a really fun part. I'm just going to put one drop. That's all I'm going to need. And then I put some water, the same water that I was using earlier. A little more than that. Kind of mix it around. It's going to make this uh, re-inker more fluid and um, it'll work out really well. So now I'm going to take the paintbrush and just kind of use a flicking motion. I'll move this closer down here. <laughs> and. I'm going to try to control the splatter to um, not go everywhere. Okay, there's one. Do you see? So this would be a controlled splatter, <laughs> controlled release. Now the one thing about um, the emboss resist is even this ink is going to be resisted by the embossing so it'll go maybe in the veins of the leaves where there is no embossing but um it will not go on um the actual it will not stay on the actual embossing itself okay wow that's a lot of splatter <laughs> um uh, yeah it is a lot of splatter <laughs> it's more than i intended but it's all good all right so i'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and trim paper I was a little too generous with the with the black flicking, but um, I managed to get a little bit of it up with my uh, paper towel. So um, one thing that we can do is uh, rub and see if we can get a little bit of it off. But it's time to trim. Um, we're going to trim this piece of watercolor down to four and a half by three and a half, and right now um, it's measuring five and a quarter. So. Um, we're going to bring it down to four and a half. Um, I just kind of want to keep the sentiment into the middle of the paper, but there do, it doesn't have to be exact. So I would suggest to just kind of play with it, especially where um, the paper is starting to buckle a little bit. And if you want to keep some kind of um, like one of the colors, if you if you really like one of the colors, then make sure you keep that part onto the card. And that'll be easy by avoiding cutting it in that area. So this is our four and a half and we're going to make it three and a half. This is how much we need to bring off so I'm going to try to eyeball it a little bit. And bring it to three and a half. These measurements don't have to be the same measurements that you use. It's just um, the size that I felt was in proportion to the rest of the of the components of the card. So you can feel free to make it a little bigger if you need, or a little smaller. You can make it a full full card size. All right, come on, paper, work with me. There we go. All right, all my little pieces are trimmed off. And this is what the, the finished watercolor piece is going to, um, what the size it's gonna be. So we're ready to start mounting. This is the um, card base made of old olive that I described earlier. And this is the designer paper. And off camera, I took a piece of linen thread. This is the linen thread here. Um, I just took a length of it and put it around and I chose to have the bow actually show because I want to be able to to mount this and and see the bow you can make it the bow as big or as little as you like I'll be using fast fuse to attach this
because I don't want this thread to go anywhere. You can also use snail adhesive or liquid glue, but this works well and it only takes a little bit. And to hold this down, I'm going to use dimensionals. Um, but before I do it, I'm going to take a clean portion of a paper towel, or you can use a baby wipe or something, and I'm going to rub the pieces or the sections that actually had the emboss on them to uh, make sure that there's no paint. Well, it's actually ink. It's not paint. Um, to see if I can get that up, because sometimes the the fluid will pool on top of the emboss resist and this will allow it to it is taking some up and allow it to actually remove it from that part even down here in the in the copper embossing we'll get it around yeah that works out nicely all right so um this is where i um would if I were making this for non-camera, uh, then I would probably use one of my fun foam pieces to do some, um, to hold this card down in place. But I want you guys to be able to use the products that you have on hand. Um, you might not have the fun foam on hand. Um, the one thing that is to note is that this watercolor paper is thick and it is warped a bit and so you really need a strong bit of adhesive to keep it keep it in line make sure those are all staying put foam strips would work good here um, the fun foam that I use, um, it's got adhesive on one side and so it sticks straight down. I love it. All right, so there's no um, right or wrong place. You put this down on your card where you feel like you want it to be. I kind of centered it off a bit and when I put this other paper underneath it, kind of as a, you know, they support each other visually. Um, so that's why I chose to offset it a bit. And there's not a lot of fancy with this card. Um, well, I guess you could say it is, but uh, to me, it's not a lot of fancy. So here's where I will use my wonderful paper piercing tool. And I will um, take up one of these dots. And then I will try to see if you can see what I'm doing here. I'll pry up the back which is just really a, a thin piece of adhesive. I apologize if I'm getting my head into the camera, but I usually have to look with my with my eyes and not through my glasses. <laughs> okay, so there's one dot and the adhesive piece is here. And he's gonna go over here and hang out with all the little bunnies. So this little dot, I can choose where it goes. It could be, um, I choose to usually follow the water lines and let my embellishments, if any embellishments, I choose to let them complement the water lines. So um, that would be a natural place that I would because there's a, a water line here. This is a big one here, a big dot. Ah, oh, it came off super easy. I didn't even try. They are very sticky though. Okay, so let's give this guy a nice place to hang out. Okay, we'll put him over here because I'm not real happy about that color there. And here's a middle size. I just want to give the appearance of water droplets so I'm not really looking to have um, shiny shiny for the card. I, just, I, wanna, I want it to complement everything visually so there's three and I think I would like to have one more here we are it's a small and have him come down here all right that's great now the last thing that I um, did for my card that I haven't done yet is to 
take a, a some kind of a watercolor marker or Copic marker and make a drop shadow around the leaves. So um, I believe that'll be our next step. I've added a little bit of the shadow on my own off camera. I'm using C4 Copic sketch marker and I'm uh, positioning as if the light source is coming from the upper right hand. So I would want to make my shadow on the other side of the sun. So I've gotten all the way around and let's get this guy here. Just drawing a thin line, um, an easy shadow, not something that um, I'm not putting too much thought into it. It's just I know that there's a shadow where the sun lays um, and it's just that simple, just that easy. All right. Now let's attach these embellishments and we are almost finished. This is the fine tip glue pen from Stampin' Up. And this is, this is really, really great adhesive. And I like the tip. It's wonderful for embellishments. Okay. Put that on. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of get a little bit excited whenever I put on sequins or some type of embellishment because I know that the card is so close to being finished. It's it's like that moment, almost, almost finished, almost finished, but not quite. One last runaway droplet of water. And that's it. He is on there. This is great glue. Um, it has a no clog end, but the trick is to get the pin back into the nozzle because it's teeny, teeny, tiny. And my glasses don't like to cooperate <laughs> for my eyes to work to have that on. So this is it. This is the, this is the final card. This was my original card and I think we did pretty good as far as being um, getting close to the the look that was achieved before. This is the original card and um, I definitely did not use as heavy a hand on the black flicking for the splatter. <laughs> but that's kind of the way art goes. Um, this is, does it, this doesn't look bad. I don't think that the flicking takes too much away from the final product. And I feel that if this card were sent to somebody that that they would they would absolutely love it. So this is a, a, like a late summer rendition and it's it's an easy card. The the point is that we learned the process of emboss resist. We used watercolor paper and we used heat embossing to create our um images and because they resisted the water then this is a great technique for you to have in your um in your locked away to be able to pull a resource anytime you need it thank you guys for sticking with me through this long video i know it is long um, technique videos kind of have a tendency to be lengthy and um i have been asked to do more and more technique videos so I will try my best. Once school starts back up then I'll have a lot more time to be able to devote to um, my passion of paper crafting. So um, keep the comments coming, keep the suggestions coming. Please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching it there because whenever we have more uh, likes on a video um, on YouTube, then that allows me to be able to uh, bring different enhancements to um, the YouTube channel and the YouTube experience, which I appreciate it um, very much. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thoughtful Branches is being featured on my blog this month, August 2016, as a limited time purchase from Stampin' Up. 
all of the cards that you see here today are made with the same stamp set and dies, beautiful branches dies and thoughtful branches stamps. There are a number of images in this stamp set that are going to be a wonderful addition to your stash. All of the cards made that are featured here are using different techniques and as you see here, some of the same com components can give you a totally different look. If you're interested in purchasing this bundle, please contact me, Jenny Hall, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, at the contact information that is listed in the details of this YouTube video, or the information that's on my website at www.jennystampsup.com. Thanks.